We've got everything working now. And uh, yeah, so I was thinking we could start off with uh, announcing the winners from the last mixing contest, which was insane. Mm -hmm. And that then, sounds uh, great. yeah, we'll so, go through it. So what are they winning? So the prize for this thing is nuts. It's a ST2 Pro from Trinov which is a whole room calibration system. So it's a whole, it's actually a whole computer in a box, but it's a, a whole calibration processor and it comes with their 3D calibration microphone. I know it well. Um, hold on one second. I think people are having tech issues. Oh, fun. Hold on one sec. Not that we ever would have tech issues. Okay, sounds fine for most people. Okay, great. Uh, well, that's yeah. one hell of a prize. Um, courtesy of the good people at Trinov. Mm -hmm. One of my um, best friends works at Trinov. It may have something to do with it. Um, <laughs> his name is Benoit. He was my first ever assistant here. Yep. I, I, my, the, first time, the first time I had a, an assistant, like a serious assistant. It's awesome. But Benoit was it. Then he moved on, and now he's back in France, and he's working for Trinov. Um, so well that's awesome what an yeah. amazing um what an amazing thing the thing that's odd is like if you think about it the person who's going to turn in the best mix is the guy who needs the train of the least <laughs> in theory um uh, but um but uh it's a great piece of gear i used to have one here and they loaned me one um but um like all electronic uh things for me, it was more important to have a room first, and I, I am able to have a room here. Um, and so once we did the room, I realized that I did not need the electronics. I didn't need the sound works, and I did not need a train up. However, in the other smaller rooms here, we could benefit from a train up. If your room is too small, if you don't have the capability of building out like a real stuff, and you really want to hear, the only two solutions are electronic correction or headphones. Sometimes you also have to correct the headphones, um, depending on what headphones you can find. Since the Focal ones are no longer available, uh, and there's not a lot that's really, really, really accurate. Um, lately, I've been going back to the 600s, mm. um, and that's been good. But the, the Trinov is very powerful. They have a microphone with like a cool-looking microphone with five branches that actually listens to the room in 3D. Um, and... Um, and then corrects automatically. Um, so I had it in this room when it was facing the other way. And um, I'll show you the room later. Um, and uh, it was great. So I, I'm, I have here a list of people. So first I'd like to say that that session, um, I haven't seen the session itself, but I heard the music several times um, because I listened to the, the top 10. Uh, that was a really intense thing to mix. And I must say, uh, at least from the top 10 out of a couple hundred, the top 10 were amazing. Actually, in my opinion, the winner mix is better than the records mix. Mm. Just saying. Not saying it loud. It's just between us. But um, yeah. I, li I really like that mix. Uh, actually, I liked the, the top three mixes a lot. And it was very difficult to choose uh, between the top three. And um, I spent a lot of time uh, level matching and making sure I was listening to everything at the same um, LUFS average. And, um, and so, um, so what do I do? Do I just tell the name of the dude and that's it? Uh, well, let's, let's start with uh, the top three people. Okay. So who, were the, who were the two runner-ups? So the two runner-ups, there is somebody named Otlib, O-T-L-I-B, Otlib. Mm -hmm. Um, so the notes I have, I don't remember the mix, um, because I've listened to so many of them. Um, uh, great vocal treatment, great definition, but I fe felt like the bass drum should be more forward. And also I felt from my notes that it was a little crispy around 10 K, uh, but it was definitely, you know, in the top three mixes. Um, if it hadn't been for the other two, uh, you probably would have won. Uh, the other runner-up runner is named Matt Shy, M-A-D-S-H-Y-E. Uh, he had the bass bass drum of everything. And apparently that, that bass drum probably was a tough one. 
um, had lots of cool tones and space, uh, but it felt a little, uh, I don't know how to explain. It, it was, everything was cool, but it felt a little dry. Like it didn't feel as generous as the mix from, um, yeah, it felt a little light. The bass drum was awesome, but the bass, I remember the bass uh, did not take the place. To, I think the, the, the challenge in this thing was that the, the, everything was so fat that you had to make a choice, you know? And it's always mm -hmm. difficult to be independent when you already have the song live in the world, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So you're tempted to try and beat that. And what does beat mean? You know, it means nothing. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, usually you beat by making it louder. That's what we do in the real world. And then you send a shitty louder mix and then they like that better than the better softer mix, which is why I always level match when I listen to things. Mm -hmm. um, but people don't. So it is what it is. Um, yeah. But I thought that mix was awesome. And I think that was the best bass drum of all the mixes. But I felt that then it basically raised, high past the whole mix a little bit. Um, by mm -hmm. having, but that was the way to go, though. A leaner bass drum, leaving room for some, you know, the rest to to breathe. So that was cool. And so the winner, um, uh, oh, Maz is here. Great, that's awesome. Yeah. We should say we should say hi. That was really good work. Um, so the winner, his name is Abel Delgador, um, and it's a very interesting situation with that mix. Uh, because it was crushed to smithereens, mm. which I usually don't like. Like, you send me a mix at minus six, and I'm like, eh, right. no, you know. Right. Um, but I, I level everything. <clears throat> uh, somebody is saying that they're not hearing me. Can you guys hear me? Wave of hands. Uh, in here. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks. Um, so all good. Um, so. When I when I first heard it, I was like, it was A, right? Because I got it in alphabetical order. Um, so when I first heard it, I was like, oh, this is so loud. Um, and I just ignored it because it was so loud. Mm -hmm. And I was right. like, bleh, you know, I, I can't endorse um, making something so loud. This It peaks at minus five value FS. You know, it's wow. silly. Um, but I always do several passes. To make sure that and in, in different orders right, right so that right. i don't I, several passes in different orders so that i'm not influenced by what i just heard in the same order and everything so the second time i came around i was like okay and let me level match more you know so i level matched more and um it's the best mix even though it's crushed there's no need to deliver a mix that loud a mix that loud unless you're trying to be I don't know, Manny, um, mm -hmm. and you want to steal the gig, the gig from Manny, and then you have to deliver it louder than Manny, and then then you can go, once you have the gig, you can go back and, and leave some headroom so that you can hear, you know, the punch more. But somehow, mm -hmm. he managed to keep it fat, even though it is blasted. But it, it was the best balance, and it was the best spirit of the song. Hmm. So I decided to not be political and I decided to not discard him for this insanely loud thing because who am I? You know, I'm sure you can probably find somewhere on the internet some mixes that I blasted because I had to. So in this case, he didn't have to. If he recalls that mix and brings his limiter down 3 dBs, he's going to have something genuinely gl glorious. It's already really good as it is. And it turned out to be the best fully level matched. So, um, Abel Delgador, which sounds like a Moroccan name to me, um, is mm -hmm. the winner of the Trinov ST2. Amazing. So, voila. Congrats. Hey, um, there you go. Uh, I, can leave, I can leave the top 10. Yes, I can, I can absolutely list the top 10. Mm -hmm. uh, from my memory, the next one that I really dug was somebody named Petri, P-E-T-R-3-I. Uh, I also enjoy, um, enjoyed the work of Mrod. Um, it was, but they were, I noted on, so let me give you some my notes. Petri, uh, I wrote cool tones, cool tones. There's a bleed around 60, 
uh, and it's a little crunchy. You know, somebody was um, a little generous on the limiter and did not pay attention to the release times. Uh, the vocal treatments were good. Emrod, I wrote great work, a little bunchy around 90 to 110, and the vocal feels dry, but I like the balances. Uh, there was dangerous production, um, great work, very defined spaces. Um, but there's a peak at 60 that comes on the chorus when that thicker bottom comes in, and so it distorted. Uh, there's like there was actually fret on the on the sides, and that's bad. Uh, but the balances were good, uh, and I like the I remember liking the space. Um, and then uh, there was somebody named KLWN, mm -hmm. uh, and he was the one who delivered at the most civil level. Uh, uh, the vocals felt loud, the tones were great, um, but I, the first thing I would have done is jack up the, the drums 3 dBs on that one. There was somebody named Daniel Wander, W-A-N-D-E-R. Um, cool bass drum, not as cool as the Mads, but really good. I remember it had a lot of personality, and he had a stereo effect on the bass, and, um, it, and so and I remember it exactly. So that's cool. The problem is that it basically eradicated all the bottom. And because this bass drum was a little punchier and leaner, uh, then the the mix felt thin. The rest was was good, but the mix felt thin and everything felt bright because there was no anchor. Um, and then there was somebody named Alexis Kerous. That sounds like a frog like me. Uh, Alexis Kerous. Uh, great balances. Oh yeah, I remember that one. Um, it was a little muddy in the mids, um, and uh, there was a veil, a slight veil at 10K. So his, his speakers are probably a little bright. And so he was a little uh, high and shy. But these are shades. All of this, all these 10 guys. Oh no, there was one more. Um, there was somebody named Samuel, Samuel Moss. Uh, and that was really good work actually, but he got bit. Um, there was a really weird resonance in the sun in the sub, mm -hmm. and that created a, a mask. Uh, and it, it basically the, the the whole mix was crunching up on the choruses because there was so much energy at the bottom, and he was pushing hard into his limiter, and so things started crushing, which was sad because the vocal spaces were creative and interesting. So that's mm. everybody, right? That's everybody. Right. That's everybody. Yeah. Um, so there you go. But everybody did a really good job. It's impressive. Um, yeah. And, uh, and, but the three that listed first to me were uh, more achieved, uh, even though all the other ones were extremely, you know, very competent, could be totally acceptable in a professional environment. Some of them could be a V1, and then the producer mm -hmm. would give some feedback to make it, you know, another level. Mm -hmm. um, and, but I felt that those two, those three that I picked could be sent to mastering to go. Awesome. What else? Yeah. Uh, pretty cool. There's actually some familiar names in that top 10 list. Oh, really? And even more interesting is uh, who you chose as kind of the third place, even though we didn't really have places there. Uh, Otlib actually had third place on our last mixing contest. There you go. So, pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so well, congrats, guys. You know, it's a journey. It's a journey because uh, it's, it's just like playing a sport, you know? After you get to a certain level, you get consistency. And then once you get the consistency, then and you keep doing the contest, you're going to keep propping up to the top of the contest because you're consistent and you're consistently able to give um, to make a good mix. Anyone mm -hmm. can do one good mix. You can spend a year on a track and listen to it everywhere. Not that anybody here would ever do that, but uh, <laughs> you can spend a year on a track and keep going and keep going and keep going and then tweak it and tweak it and tweak it and tweak it and tweak it. And then eventually you'll get to somewhere good. You know, even if you're a little overwhelmed here and there and there's some stuff you don't fully understand why they are happening. Overall, anyone can do a good mix. Mm. 10 good mix, 10 good mixes or a good mix every day, consistent every single day. That is what we are striving towards. And that takes a long time. Uh, but once you get there, then your instincts kick in and you're like, oh, no, nah, this is not good enough. I can do better. You know, right. Yeah. Um, interesting. On um, a lot of those comments, uh, you're you're finding that 
some things are kind of going wrong at the very last stage in the limiter. Is there anything that you would kind of suggest to people to, to watch out for? I mean, you cannot make uh, loud a mix that wasn't designed to be loud. So you can mix for um, six months and then you love the mix and you slap a limiter on it because you can't, it's not as loud as whatever. Um, then you, um, then you won't make it loud. And if you send it to mastering, uh, it will uh, basically destroy um, your mix. So you have to work your way to the point where the mix is okay to fit in that restrained space. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's the same as if you have if you have an elephant that you grow into a room from a baby elephant. At one point, it's going to stop growing because it's restrained by this place. But if you have a big ass elephant, you won't grow. You will not be able to put him into the room without destroying the room. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. that's pretty much the vibe. Um, right. You can't, I mean, unless it's an 808 and a vocal, fine. But something that has hundreds of tracks like that thing, it has. you have to think about the angle at the beginning. If you're into that kind of shit, it's a, it's a scourge, right? What, when, why do we have to consider loudness a factor in mixed delivery, considering that pretty much everything is loudness um, controlled in the distribution system at this point? Mm -hmm. Because of insecurities and stupidity, mostly. Um, mm -hmm. I think I would put stupidity first, insecurity second. I'm not sure. They're neck and neck. They both win. <laughs> right. So, so because of that um, duet, president, vice president, stupidity and insecurity, and they swap duties, um, we can't, um, we can't, if you're in, if, if you're in the commercial mixing, if, if it's your livelihood to, to mix records and to master records, then you have to take that garbage into consideration. Not my favorite thing in the world. Right. I had some mixes. I have plenty of mixes that were really awesome, but but uh, they had to be be made loud, so they they crunch. You know, it's just silly, right? Because at right. one point, you're the last thing, and the, and or the master engineer is the last thing, and the client is like, "Well, why can't it be as loud as oh no, the 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 Kanye record?" I'm like, "Because, dude, you have an orchestra, seventeen tracks of guitars, sixty tracks of vocals, eight bass drums, and three snare drums, and Kanye has an eight or eight and a vocal." Mm -hmm. And so it, it just, and but that's too much information. They can't. Yeah. They, they're not, yeah. they're only interested in the fact that when they press play, the shit jumps at them from the speakers because they're not able to turn the volume knob. It's hard. It's, it's a mm -hmm. lot of energy to turn that volume knob. Right. So, yeah. It's Actually, the, it's amazing how minimalistic those records are. Those on purpose. Records. Yeah. That is, but that's because that's the only way you can shake, you, you can keep up with the Jonesies. Mm -hmm. The more stuff yeah. you put into a record, um, the most space you need to hold it is just makes a lot of sense. Unless you're willing to just like right. turn it into a layer, several layers of pancakes. Yeah. And then, uh, and then you have a stack of pancakes, you know? Yeah. It's not, it's not that much fun, but it is what it is. So if you knew you were going to end up having to make something super, super loud, are you going to kind of start at that volume at the beginning of the mix so you can? Feel what's happening there? Or no, but I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start pretty close. Mm -hmm. I'm sure as hell not gonna leave the bass drum go like super thick all the way down. I mean, if you listen to some of the loudest records, like the reggaeton records, they give the illusion of having bottom, but they don't have any. Like mm. the bass drum sounds like a mosquito, an angry mosquito. And then there's a vague like 808 in the background, like in Patagonia, all the way south. Mm -hmm. But it's not. It doesn't sound like if you level match and you listen to a record that has actual bottom in it, like, I don't know, you know pick your poison. Um, then like, you know, like, uh, uh, hence to myself, like the Serban mix, hence to myself. And you compare that to mm -hmm. another record at the same level and you're like, oh, right. You know, all yeah. the, all the Will Knox record that I use as a ref, my, my old, you know, standard or the, the um, DJ Colette record that I use as a ref. You know, um, it, it is what it is. It's one or the other. Right, right. Great. 
so yeah, congratulations uh, to the winners and yeah. uh, all of the top 10 and everybody. Um, as we always kind of say in these wrap up things, like the prizes are there because it's nice to have something to strive for and everything. But the the real goal of this thing is to get the exercise in and, and dealing with a track that has, you know, a hundred, I think this one had 115 tracks in it. So absolutely massive. And you had the option between using the production affected tracks or just the mm. dry ones. Uh, yeah. Without the I mean, the welcome stuff. to real life. You know, you sent 225 tracks or 240 tracks, no instructions. Merry Christmas. Here, in yeah. this case, you actually had a reference. Often, we get 200 track sessions with no rough mix. And the yeah. tracks are labeled audio one through audio 220. You know, that just happened to me yesterday. Um, I was like, oh, OK, so I guess I can do whatever I want. But I know that I'm going to do whatever I want. And I'm going to send it to them. And then they're going to write back and say, well, can we send you a ref? You know, so now I, so now I always, always say, oh, there's no ref, there's no rough. I can't, I can't start. Hmm. You know, right. um, otherwise I'm wasting my time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can't hear audio sixty two. Where is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a, um, there was a, a, a door slam, on beat three of the last chorus. Just, I can't listen to this mix without that in it. <laughs> it happens. Let me know when the next it, version is posted. It's real. It's real. <laughs> awesome. Well, cool. Uh, yeah. So that again, the song was from NZCA Lines. Uh, mm -hmm. He's also a member of Metronomy, and yeah. his new record came out in July. So definitely go check that out. Support that him. track was awesome. Yeah. I definitely love fun. it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I like that. This is like a bit of a Prince vibe, mm -hmm. and then it was like it's super good production. I don't know what the sh which I mean. It's very creative production. I don't know if the session was, you know, what it was, but I'm sure it was mm -hmm. fine because Benoit only gets involved with cool stuff. So yeah, I'm sure it was good. Plus, he learned here. <laughs> so yeah, very good. Cool. cool. Uh, you have to watch the video too. It's pretty crazy. Okay, I I haven't. Cool. I, heard, I listened right. to the I listened to the to the commercial mix. You know. Not before, mm. after. Mm. So I wasn't, you know, influenced. And um, yeah, it, I think that uh, the, the top three mixes are in the league of or better than the commercial mix. That's awesome. I hope I'm not Jeez. pissing anybody off. I hope it's not Benoit who makes it, because then he's no. going to be mad at me. <laughs> um, so there awesome. you go. All right. Uh, well, cool. So um, moving right along. Uh, we were thinking it'd be really fun, as requested a bunch in the Facebook group, to check out your new room setup. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So um, so what happened is um, there was a virus going around uh, New York called uh, Coco Roro. And um, when Coco Roro hit, um, uh, well, shit stopped. So I thought that I took advantage of the Coco Roro season to uh, do a bunch of stuff in the room that I wanted to do for a long time. Um, and also, after a couple months of being locked up, the need to look outside a window was rather important. So uh, in my room, I, was, I used to sit facing the wall, and the window that I'm facing now was behind me all day long, which is done. So I was like, OK, fine, I want to turn it around. And the reason why I didn't face the window in the first place is because at the time, when I started this room in 2006 or seven, um, um, I, I, I went, I came here and I got into the room. It used to be an apartment. Walls were broken and then it became one big room. Um, and I was like, oh, there's windows. I can't set up in front of windows, right? It's bad. So I went to the other way. And then I organized my life for 15, 14 years uh, with my back to um, the one tree left in Manhattan right here. I can see it. So um, it was really um, so. So then um, and then, you know, I, I went from uh, uh, SM8s and then I had solo sixes, twin sixes. 
and then I had my SM9, right? And uh, and then I had like crazy stuff in the corners, but over um, like trying to make the room sound as good as possible. Um, and then um, and then at one point I had to become faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And faster. Mm -hmm. So the idea of finishing a mix and checking it in the morning and then sending it in the morning became obsolete because I had to finish a mix and send it now. So I wanted more certainty in my mixes. And then I cranked out a phenomenal amount of mixes that did very, very well. But there was always this odd moment where I would like, ha you know, I was not 100% sure and didn't feel right, you know? Um, so I decided since I'm here and since the room are, are the perfect dimension, um, because I knew that much over time, I decided, hey, you know, since I have the right size room, why not push it to the next level and look at the tree? So, so I called um, this um, amazing acoustician named Martin Pilchner. Um, and um, and, he, and I, he came down and he said, well, yeah, your room is great. Why don't you, why don't you just face the window? And I said, uh, well, I can't put my speakers in in front of a window and he said kid you not you went like this have you been to a recording studio lately and i was like oh right right <laughs> right right <laughs> except because the window is to the outside doesn't make any difference from a window to a live room i'm a mm -hmm. goddamn genius you know, so so the things you learn over time, you know, the things right. that's right in front of your face. He literally said, Have you been to recording studio lately? <laughs> and I was like, There's oh. one right behind that wall behind <laughs> you that has yeah, the same setup. <laughs> I live in one. So mm -hmm. um, so I was like, okay, cool. So he made us build, um, and I told him, I said, Look, this is New York. It might crater soon. You know, I, I'm not interested in spending uh, a lot of money building something that I can't take with me right. because I don't know how long I'm going to be here. You know, mm -hmm. it's like we had the virus. Uh, we had to shut down for three months. There was a chance we would never reopen, mm -hmm. you know, and me, I did, I, I, I was not affected. I thought I would be affected, but I wasn't, um, by the, the virus, not physically, but work wise physically, mm -hmm. I think I got, Corona in at at um, at Nam in January. Um, they just came uh, up with a different name for it this year. It's normally Nam Thrax, but they thought coronavirus yeah, sounded better. Coronavirus is way better. Um, so so, but I didn't get affected um, work wise. But the studio had to close for three months, so I was like, hey, you know, uh, Martin, I can't really start breaking walls and stuff because I don't know what's going to happen. So he built all remove. He gave us blueprints for 100% removable treatments. Hmm. So, you know, when the seventh wave of the virus hits um, next summer, uh, and I have to immigrate to, I don't know, Burkina Faso, and I'll be able to take these with me on the boat. That's nice. Hmm. Um, so we built um, six diaphragmatic resonators hmm. in the back. Um, and so we should pause there and explain what that is. Uh, it's a uh, it's a base trap that has a membrane in it, and basically the membrane turns the the energy into heat. I know it sounds weird, but that's what it does. Mm -hmm. It resonates, and it turns it into heat, just like in a speaker, like an SM9. A passive radiator turns the energy energy that's inside the box of the speaker, and turns it into heat, so that the speaker doesn't explode. And no, you cannot fry an egg on it, but um, it's a it's a it's an energy transfer. So that's what those things are. So they are like, you know, the 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 big red ones you see there. Um, and then, should, I, should we switch to this crap? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, open that up. And you can flip the camera. Yep. There we go. Okay. Um, is it flip? Because uh, it looks good on my screen. Yeah, I have your phone. Okay. So you see the S ones now. Uh, no, we see your face. 
Oh, I can't say? turn it. Sorry, I can't make it to the rear face. Again. It's not there really interesting, my face. Okay, so <laughs> let's do it this way. That's cool. a lot more interesting. So, okay, so I used to sit here, guys, right? And then I used to look at this way. Now, whoosh, it looks like that. Much nicer. So, um, so these are the diaphragmatic resonators. I can't see what I'm doing, but I mean, imagine that it's good enough for jazz. Mm -hmm. Um, and we also had regular bass traps that I built on the sides. And those were one inch 703, and now they are two inch 705. Mm. Um, so we actually used, uh, they actually, you know what? They rebuilt them from scratch because Joey, our, our you know, first engineer here, one of our good engineers here, is also handy. And um, he said, I can't make those those old traps, those one inch traps hold the two inch. Hmm. And Martin, the acoustician recommended we do two inch. So he rebuilt all of them. So he did this and these and this and this three here and this one. Awesome. Uh, it's pretty wild. We also uh, added a layer of two inch 705 um, to the clouds. So every cloud in this room has another layer of mm. 705, which is pretty wild. Um, this couch was here before, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it was over there. Um, so now the clients are in the dark and I'm in the light. <laughs> um, and then what else did we do? Uh, I brought some storage up. These used to be the drawers for my, for Lilou, my daughter's, um, uh, clothes, but she's 13 now, so she wanted more space, so she got a bigger thing. And I said, Okay, I'm getting those cherry things back. Mm -hmm. I have this one too. Don't ever forget to plan for storage in your studio, or you will regret it. The other thing we did is I got these new uh scent stands, I sold my old scent stand, my 80 cell scent stand. I could have kept them, but I hate when things just sit. Right. And I found a dude who was passionate about those invisible stands, and he, he bought them off me on, on Reverb. And instead, I bought this wall mounting system, so now I have more floor space. Mm. And right. also, I can put up to four cents up and down. So there's one tree here. There's one tree here. Oh. And then there's going to be, above the rack, there are going to be a bunch of more. Awesome. Um, we, uh, but they were out of stock, mm -hmm. so I, I had to wait. And then the big, the big deal is the desk. Mm -hmm. So I bought um, uh, this Argosy desk, and I used to not really understand what the whole thing was about Argosy. To be honest with you, back in the day, uh, this stuff is amazing. Um, I was doing, I was mostly working with um, Sterling Modular, which is also a great, great desk brand. And I was good friends with the owner. So I helped him design the desk that I wanted. Uh, but I met Tim and Argosy, and he was like, you know, we should work together. I was like, okay. So I called him, and now I have this desk. It's called a 520, an Aura, A U R A, 520R because it only has a rack space on the right side. Uh, they have an LR, we could have the same 11 rack on the left side, mm -hmm. and then they have a, a regular with no rack space. And so this stuff used to be in my uh, roll-up rack, uh, which I also sold. Mm. Um, and then the, the, the Argosy has more rack space under. Seven cool. on this side. Yeah. And then it has seven on this side, but obviously on this side of seven, you can't use all seven because you have the bottom of these mm -hmm. top ones. So I was able to use two here. And then all the desk, we're not quite done, but all the cables are hidden. Mm -hmm. And the desk, you can see in the back, everything is done in the back. Beautiful. So we're gonna redo the, the dressing of the cables, but it's pretty nice. And then, um, the key, the, the key of this desk, which is really absolutely awesome, 
The reason why I needed another desk, because that other desk did me well for 14 years, is because I wanted space. I mm -hmm. wanted space to put an OP1, a controller, a laptop. I wanted to have two S1s mm -hmm. and a dock. Um, and I wanted to be able to put the controller for the keys, my new speaker. And, mm -hmm. I, and I wanted everything to be on the desk. So I needed a bigger desk, but I needed to be wrapped around. Otherwise, it would have taken the whole room. Mm -hmm. And then this desk, my friends, lips. Oh, look at this. So now, and this sounds, this sounds like a gadget to a lot of people, but it's not. Check this out. Say I'm doing production, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm here, and I'm working on a keyboard part. Yeah. When I get back to my desk, I don't have to sit down. I can work. Right. Right. And when we're working with somebody, like collaborating, somebody can be here. They can go to the sense. Yeah. And then they can come back here, and I, we can work standing. Right. And that is a huge, huge difference. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. It's also badass to be able to wire the thing while it's up so you don't have to feel like you're under a car, you know? Right. Yeah. I didn't um, that. big difference really really big difference so that's yeah. um that's another one and that's the tree mm -hmm. there it is <laughs> the last tree in manhattan um <laughs> and these are the keys unbelievable speakers um, yeah let's uh let's talk about those for a second yeah i like them very much my friend tony said hey you know i have these speakers you gotta listen to them i said ah no i'm good thanks mm -hmm. um and then send me a pair anyway and then um and then i listen to them and they're really that they are they they are all this weird technology in them they're digital so i should hate them but um but i don't i love them uh and they've uh, they've got me through COVID because yeah. they're incredibly room independent they use this directional thing so they're basically cardio uh up down to 50. So they don't put any garbage in in the room, and um, and it's it's quite stunning. Yeah, it's really really special. Everybody who sits here is like, "What is this?" You mm -hmm. know, they don't believe it. Forgot to show you the the other bass traps. Yes, that Joey built. They are monsters. So this is two, one on top of the other, mm -hmm. and they're literally just hanging here against the wall. Awesome. You know, and then there's symmetry on the other side. These look like six inch, right? Uh, they're great. huge. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'll show you with my hand. There, that's how wow. that's how thick they are here. But in wow. the back, they are four feet. Wow! See, they they are they are they are like a weird shape. Yeah, and this on purpose so they have a high density. I'm going to show you something uh, on this. Can I share my screen on this thing or no? Uh, yeah, on the phone or on your main. Computer. on on the uh, on the main but get, let me finish this um okay cool so we have the the same thing on both sides obviously mm -hmm. uh even though the room is not symmetrical which is very difficult for my soul because i'm a little ocd with the sy symmetry thing but mm -hmm. i just had to live with it plus you know when i get i just look at the tree i'm like oh look i'm in nature right um yeah i also got this ah uh, because my laptop melted literally it's at apple right now they're trying to figure out how it's possible that he got that bad. Um, mm -hmm. And then um, we organized the racks a little differently. First, you, as you notice, uh, I have a, what you call a big ass monitor. Um, what happened is my LG died. So you can see, check it out. It's still here. It's ah, behind. It's like right, the, the support. Baby, this baby bear and papa bear. Uh, <laughs> and so, the LG died, mm -hmm. uh, which was highly regrettable. Um, but um, uh, they are key speakers, KII, really, really good. Um, and we still have the SM. I still have the SM9s that are right here. Mm -hmm. um, those trios are for sale, by the way. Um, lots of stuff for sale on our Reverb uh, page. If you want, if you want to buy gear, there's lots of cool gear online reverb page yeah i'll drop the link in the chat for that yeah um so um so the idea was that because we do so many shoots for you guys to have an actual corridor here like you could put a human being right here and you can go behind the desk how cool is that andrew 
uh, Ruiz, yeah. who is our cameraman, he saw this. He was like, "Yeah, cool." <laughs> um, and um, so I was. I had my regular LG monitor on an arm, and I wanted to push the screen away from me. And the monitor died in 15 minutes before mix. So what I did is, the boys, I said, go downstairs. Go, they went downstairs and got the TV. And I put the TV up. And the only other screen we had available in the facility was this enormous 60-inch screen. Enormous. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's so stupid. And then they put it up, and I was like, oh, this is nice. Really cool. So much cool. space, yeah. So much space. The problem is like TVs are too slow. So you're you're mousing and you feel like you're drunk. Mm -hmm. So I looked, I found this one from this brand called Hisense. Mm -hmm. That has an uh, it's this is only only a 55. Mm -hmm. uh, but um and it's got the right color space uh, so that you can read this, the text. Also, you have to have a four 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 color space. And on the 10 millisecond, um, the problem is for 10 milliseconds is not fast enough for me. That's because uh, of all of your Call of Duty playing. Yes, that's what it is. Yeah. So I'm actually going to probably demote this one to Dangerous and get a invest into a super high performance gaming monitor. And for, Call super, for Call of Duty. And the super high performance gaming monitors, unfortunately, um, uh, do not come in 55. They only come in 49. Unless you're willing to pay three thousand dollars, which I am not. Right. <laughs> um, so that's that. Um, the way I organized the rest of the rig is, I decided that I put um, these old racks on the wheels so that I can bring them closer. So the processing is over here. Whatever hardware processing I use is either here, here, or here. And the stuff I use all the time is here. The stuff I use less is here, and the stuff I use or don't touch much because it's set and forget is over there. Mm. And then the the command center for everything is right in front of me right here. So mm. there is right. a um, a Matrix Studio, uh, 32 channels of Apollo X, and then um, uh, the dangerous stuff. Two, two convertites, an 80 plus, a convert two, and, um, and then a head, and then the ST at the bottom, and then the Matrix the, the whole system is organized to be able to work analog or digital. And it's Amazing. working great. Wow. It's really, really quite special. Um, I think that's about it. So the stuff I wanted to show you is the totally surreal um, frequency response of the room. Hmm. Uh, let me see. Should we bring up your computer? Yeah. Let's, cool. let's get rid of this. I uh, I just booted your phone, which is how we had your audio fab. So I gotta reinvite your phone back on screen. Sorry about that. So it's accepted and connecting. You with me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just unmuted your main microphone for a second, but you have yeah. a delay with that, right? I get a delay. Yeah. So, should I mute I'm gonna myself? invite your phone again. No, you're good. I'm gonna I'm gonna invite your phone back up. So the phone. The invite. I said yes. Here. Cool. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So check this out. So this software is free. It's called uh, Room EQ Wizard, uh, and you can download it. Let's and... see. So we don't see your screen yet. Oh, Pablo. Give me one second. This is interesting. Uh, uh, so while you're doing that, um, Varol in the chat uh, says, I wish you could get reviews about my mix. Um, that's a, a really good time to mention that we have a whole platform called Mixtank as well. So yeah. if, if you guys would like to have other peer mix members comment on your mixes, you can post your mix over in Mixtank, and then I'm sure people will be willing to leave you some feedback. Yep, so and it's that's awesome. on the top of the site, and everybody's super sweet, mm -hmm. and is really it's really pretty awesome. 
Um, so hold on, give me one second. Uh, I actually found uh, a client of mine posted one of the mixes that I gave him on Mixtank to get feedback that he then put into Mix Up and sent back to me. Cute. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Uh, okay, so I tried to share twice and it's not working because, you know, the world. Computer. Share screen. Not working. You want to show it with your phone? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. So I'll bring your video back. Uh, okay. Can you see this? Oh. There we go. Yes. Look, look at this shit. It's insane. Wow. And I was talking to the um, acoustician this morning. Um, and he said that this little dip here. Mm -hmm. And this little dip here can easily be fixed. And then I'll have a basically flat room. It's insane. And it's, uh, what are the numbers on the left uh, axis there? Um, is it like Dallas for resolution. This is within 5 dB. Yeah. So like it's basically there's a 5 dB dip at 600 hertz and a 3.5 dB dip at around 100. Mm -hmm. That's it. Everything Crazy. else is, I've never seen anything like this before in my life. Yeah. It it looks like uh it looks wrong. Like it looks like I'm cheating. Right. So <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, that's yeah, that's amazing. And that's just with like the acoustic treatment. Just the acoustic treatment. That. The the EQ on the on the keys is flat. The only thing I'm doing is I'm um high passing at uh, you can see it. Uh, I don't know if it's if it's zooming. Can you read what's going on? uh kind of it's pretty pretty tough but we get, yeah we can kind of read it so there's a high pass filter at 37 hertz hmm. that's it amazing um everything else is flat no eq no correction nothing and that's the result amazing that's yeah crazy. i mean the high end is ridiculous look at that it's so wow. silly it's like somebody took a ruler so this thing in the middle there this is actually not a big deal but he said he he could fix it easy mm -hmm. and then this he says that this is actually uh perfectly fine that he would like to actually take this down a little this area mm -hmm. here uh to tilt it down a smidgen so i'm like sure whatever you say boss because you know this has been nice it's a good feeling awesome. uh, so voila uh that's that's the news from the room uh i guess i think that's about it there's it's it was two months of work yeah yeah pretty much and um exhausting and also yeah. l lots of issues that we didn't expect um all the time wiring by the way everything is wired like all the ipads are with um hard connections Mm -hmm. uh, cable connections they're not wi-fi mm. um they go way way fast and also uh. there's no wi-fi emf soup all day long that i'm bathing in um yes. there's uh like you need um 20 usb ports to run a modern recording studio yeah unbelievable yep. yeah the stuff you never and find you're out. using vintage synths <laughs> so you're not even I'm running using USB vintage, i'm not yeah. using yeah. yeah so it's yeah there's all sorts of things like you know a lot of a lot of the power strips you buy off the shelf are horrible quality they they bleed um they bleed like crazy and you put a synth up here and then because it's above the power strip then it starts buzzing um mm. or uh usb ports uh, have grounding issue Lots of USB yeah. ports have grounding issues. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty, it was, it's, a, it's we're still in it. I mean, the, the, I still have the, this is the microphone to measure, you know, we're still like finishing it, but I'm working full bore. I went, yeah. um, um, I, I just finished the, the Gregory Porter single that's coming out next week. Finished it here. I mixed a whole record in Ableton Live site unseen. Uh, I just delivered a new track to Olivia this morning uh, um, uh, from the Doe in France. And all that is happening in real time. 
um, yeah. here and I have like, the translation is obscene. Wow. I wake up in the morning, I put my thing in my ears and I, I feel like I'm listening to Spotify. Like it's ready to go and it's been around forever. You know, that's a familiar feeling yeah. of a mix that's finished. So yeah. it's great. This is all been good. That's um, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, it, it's so not. It's wave, definitely not for the weaker heart. Yeah, not yeah. for the weaker heart. Yeah, and I if there wasn't the shutdown, I don't even know where you guys would have found time to dig into all of that. It's, it took three months. Yeah, and the only reason I was able to do it because um, uh, the first the third floor studio was open, and I put the yeah. keys in there, and I mixed through the pandemic every day. I think I mixed forty seven songs through the pandemic. Yeah. Um, and it was not as tight down there, obviously, because the room is way smaller. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't get as much of a certainty. I did, did good. Nobody complained. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's happy with the mixes. Otherwise, they would send it back. Mm -hmm. um, but um, but here now is dope. No, I got to keep the boys out. Like every time I come in here and somebody's in here trying to mix their record, I'm like, what are you doing in my room? <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were going to come today. So <laughs> Not mixing. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't there something to do at the studio? Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah a, Wade is asking. Uh, Hi, Wade. He's asking what the reading was before you redid the room. It was also really good. <laughs> it's back there too. It was great, but it wasn't like this. Yeah. You know, there were issues at two hundred. There were issues at one hundred. Uh, there was a, a bloom at the bottom. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, it wasn't this obscene. It was great, obviously, but yeah. it wasn't like this. This is this is stupid. This is really stupid. So now I put something on and I hear stuff. I hear what other people are doing better because yeah. the the room and the speakers are completely out of the question. Like there's n they have no impact on what I'm hearing. Yeah. Also, super important. I am six feet away from the speakers which means that the first reflection is not hitting the desk. I'm not hearing first reflection. I'm hearing only the speakers. That was Martin's idea. And I was like, Martin, that's really far. I don't want to be that far from my speakers. That's actually the first thing that Andrew uh, Shep said. He looked at the room uh, and he said, oh, you're too far from your speakers. And I was like, yeah, I know. It feels weird. I'm just going to give it a chance. And then, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Because the, yeah. the first reflection hits the floor and then gets blocked by the, the desk. So I yeah. don't have a first reflection. I have just direct. It's awesome. Wow. But and it no, allows you to have a bigger desk, right? Uh, yeah, it allows me to have a huge uh, ass desk. Yeah, yeah, I could have a console here and it would be okay. Right. Yeah, that dude is very talented, Martin. Very smart yeah. dude. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. Uh, Numerd is asking what you use to measure a room like that. Room EQ Wizard. It's free. Mm -hmm. It's, it looks like they stopped developing it circa 1998, uh, but it, they didn't. It still works. That mm -hmm. plus my Apollo X, uh, X4, and the microphone that came with Sonar Works. Mm. But you can get any measurement microphone for 50 bucks. Actually, RoomEQ Wizard had, has a setting where you could use a um, SPR meter, like the this is tight, everything is tight now, but you know, like a Radio Shack SPR meter as your microphone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't care and they calibrate to that microphone. But you can buy you can buy the Behringer one for like 50 bucks or something, right? Mm -hmm. Anything that yeah. looks like that, any su uh, tiny diaphragm, Ugh, come on, Whoosh. one of those guys, you know, those guys, the tiny, tiny, tiny things. Yeah, this one is the Sonarworks one, I believe. And this is the, no, that's Sonarworks. But it's, they all made in China. Mm -hmm. And they're all the same. You don't need to buy an Earthworks. You know, anything goes. Awesome. Yeah. Well, cool. Uh, so thanks for showing us that. That's awesome. Yeah, it's cool. And I'll probably put more information. Like we did crazy things. I redid the whole network in Cat 7. Um, I, the, the, that's two more. Yeah, the um, the back of the the Mac Pro is going straight at um, gigabit to a gigabit router. Um, I mean, it's like I I just went crazy. Yeah. Uh, because I know that once yeah. I stop running, 
then it's going to be another 14 years before, before I touch anything. You know what right. I mean? Because there's just no right. time. There's no time. But the, one of the main motivations is that every single synth is connected to a bomb box, an Eptec bomb box, which turns the level up to plus four. Well, it's supposed to, but it doesn't really, but close enough for jazz. <laughs> and in those boxes, they basically make the, the synth output balanced. That's what I cared about. And all that is running against the walls to the back of the Apollos. So now, if I turn my Apollo on, I can go to any synth, turn it on, and play. I don't have to have a door open. I can just play the synth right. in real time. And I can yeah. process them in real time with UAD plugins in the console. Or if I'm mm -hmm. using Luna, I can do my tones in Luna in real time with no latency. Yeah. I don't have to plug something in and bring the keyboard here, and I don't have to deal with any of that crap. I just turn the thing on, and it goes way. Yeah. Yeah. Life-changing. That's crazy. That's Can you imagine between... just five years ago, that, that didn't even seem like a thing. You Impossible. Know? I, mean, yeah. it would, it would, I mean, you could do it with an HDX rig, and, yeah. but 32 IO of HDX, yeah. good quality. You know, it's just silly. Right. And you couldn't uh, just turn them on without opening Pro Tools and wham. No, yeah. you couldn't. No. Yeah. That's because of the console. You can do that. Yeah, Very it's cool. great. And I can make gain, and I can, for example, I can permanently have the synths that have no effects in console. I can have like a delay and a reverb there mm -hmm. by default. Right. If I want to, yeah. or a phaser, right. or whatever, filter, yeah. a different filter, whatever. It's yeah. awesome. It's really good. Yeah. It's great. Cool. Well, um, so we have some questions in here. A couple of uploaded questions. I may have, have a second. We can hit through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Cool. Okay. So the number one upvoted question uh, mm -hmm. for anybody who's watching uh, on Crowdcast underneath the video, we have a ask a question area. So throw a question in there if you have one. And uh, the number one is from Illuminario, Peter Rowed. And he asks, how do you usually start your mixes? And is your approach the same for every song? Um, I usually start my mixes by listening to the rough. That would be so that I have an idea of what their original intention was. Uh, and identifying where the problems are. Because if somebody's going to hire somebody, at least I'm lucky right now, I work with really good you know, great producers, um, um, or I'm producing the record myself. Um, so it, having a perspective on what could be augmented or bettered is my first step. The second step is usually I mix songs. So I, I tend to put the vocal into a comfortable place first. That's just my thing. I just like to know that I have space for the vocal always. So I'm going to put the vocal up first. And then I'll create a bed for it at the bottom. And then I'll go from that. I used to do um, I used to do drums last, uh, but or later. Um, but because of the current aforementioned need to be competitive, um, and the drums are the ones that have the most dynamic uh, impact on the mix, then I tend to do uh, vocals, bass, and bass drum. Um, find them in a, in a good spot, then do all the widow dressing, and then come back and fine tune. Hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Super useful. Cool. Okay. Uh, section of the song to start your mix with. Anything on the master bus when mixing? Always. I mix mm -hmm. through the final master bus from day one, from minute one. Yeah. Uh, and I give my gain as soon as possible. Um, even if I have to lower the gain later into the mix when shit creeps up, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, um, I don't know. I like to, I like to get a vibe for the, for the song. So I just play the song and I do things. I don't, I'm not going to start with a particular section. I have to know, you know, if there's a gigantic difference between the verse and the chorus, I have to know that because that's going to influence everything. So if I start by looping the chorus, I will not know that until it's too late. And it costs me time. So mm -hmm. I'd rather just have a vibe for the room, you know, for the, the, the room I have left headwise throughout the song. Mm -hmm. So I will play the song in passes. And then at one point, 
I will look at what the loudest point in the song is and try and make that go and then, you know, uh, adapt the rest. Awesome. Cool. Uh, and so I'm not going to like dig in too much so we can get through some of these. Yeah. Um, so Alexis asks, uh, what's your su suggestion for room treatment, low to mid budget? And uh, lastly, he also asks, what monitor speaker adjustment software do you recommend, if any? Okay, so the number one thing to do is to adjust your, your room as much as possible physically, okay? Mm -hmm. So first, the first thing that most people do wrong is they put the speakers in the wrong place in the room, me included. Um, so if you have a smaller room, the closer to the wall, the better. It is what it is. If you can't be far enough from the wall that the 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 front wall reflection is not going to create a crazy node, then my, put your speakers against the wall, like as close to the wall as possible, and then you will hear more of the direct sound and less of the wall reflections. Uh, you will hear some wall reflections, but they will be mostly in sync with with the direct sound. Hmm. So that would the first thing. Take your speakers out of the corners. The corners are the devil. Um, I would put your speakers on uh, little isolation things, like uh, I use the ASO acoustic stuff. It's it's good. It really helps. Um, I think those are the ones that help the most, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that yeah, try and minimize the amount of first reflection, ex essentially, right? So that's the first thing. First reflection is when the sound hits the wall and then it hits you right after. And it doesn't arrive to you at the same time as the direct sound, and the different that phase difference creates chaos. Mm -hmm. So it's important that that you control that as much as possible, which is what we're doing here with those big bass straps on the side. You know, we make mm -hmm. the soft the the sides soft, and we trap the corners. So I say we, but it's really Martin did that. I I and I didn't build those things. I was busy mixing. Joey did, um, and. Uh, I just made sure he didn't kill himself doing it. Um, so the um, the the idea is the the places that are problematic is anywhere there's a corner. So you want to trap the corner, and to trap a corner, that whole foam thing, in my opinion, is just not necessarily as good as much more affordable uh, rock wool, seven hundred three or seven hundred five. <clears throat> the denser the amount of rock wool. 705 and the thickest amount of rock wool you could put in there the better off you are and then it gets complicated you can make diaphragmatic resonators and stuff like that but if you shove a bunch of rock wool in the corners you're in good shape yeah. and then after that if you um if you need to if you can't get it to the point where you're comfortable sending mixes out you will never get it perfect uh, but if you can, if you can get it to a point where you're comfy sending your mixes out, then you're good to go. If you're not, then you can turn to electronics. Um, so either Sonarworks, uh, the two I've tried are Trinov and the Sonarworks. Uh, the Trinov deals with the time domain. Sonarworks only deals with the frequency, right? Time domain is very important because um, sometimes you can look at a room and it's perfect, and then you mix in it and it's you you don't. It doesn't work. And the reason for that is because the room retains energy over time. Uh, and so the bass drum, you, when you look at the frequency like this, like I showed you, you only see uh, instant T equals whatever, X, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't see over the first two seconds. You know when you're in the room and you hear a bass drum, and it goes boom, and you have that resonance in the bottom? Mm -hmm. So that's what really fucks with your brain when you're mixing is like if you're trying to to mix a bass drum and and there's this huge resonance in the room like say it's there's one second just at 35 hertz or at 60 hertz then you're going to try and cut that because it's in the way it doesn't feel good and then if you do that then your mix is going to start sounding thin and you're going to have phase issues and it's going to turn to shit so the the it's important to to correct for that if you're going to use electronics and turn off that's that the the sonar works doesn't sonar works in my opinion is awesome for headphones 
because there's no time domain in headphones um, because you know it's it's mm-hmm. it's the ne- next to your head. So I, for the longest time, I used Sonarworks on my um, Spirit Pros to make them even better, and then um, and then I stopped doing that because I have this, and um, I don't really need to I don't really need to do that. Mm-hmm. But if you're trying to optimize your room, you you want to get a train off. You can analyze the room and the train off with align both the frequency domain and the time domain. Yeah. Um, so I would say train off first for the for the if you're using speakers and then sonar works. You got to be careful though. Uh, the reason why you want to bring your room to be acoustically as good as possible is that when you turn the train off on, then you have latency. So if you're just or or the sonar works. I think there's less latency with sonar works because they don't do time domain. Um, mm-hmm. So if you're going to use the train off, you're going to use it for mixing and mastering. But you're not going to use it for doing production because that adds an extra layer of latency. Now, mm-hmm. if you're just the engineer and your musician is in on the other side of the glass, it's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. But if you have a musician with you in the control room, or if you're trying to play a keyboard, then then the latency may be an issue. So you have to be careful with that. Mm-hmm. But it does it goes the extra mile that if you can't build, uh, or if your room is not big enough. Like this is the minimum size room that you can get a decent sounding room, mm-hmm. and that's a big room. Yeah. yeah. So you can't. We have. We don't have solutions for the laws of physics yet. The laws of physics are the laws of physics, and it's going to be for a while. You know, we don't have the quantum acoustics yet. Working on it. Sure, someone is. But for now, we have a piece of cardboard oscillating and sending bass to us in the room. And the walls freaking out, and the, the floor freaking out, and the ceiling freaking out, and sending you bad information. And so, trying to capture as much of that as possible is is the key of the game. I did the RTA in this room, six octave RTA, uh, like um, you know the uh, the DK plot, and it's perfect. Mm-hmm. Like uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Martin was like, wow, I mean, it's super clean. I don't know how to read that stuff. I have it here, but he re- yeah. reads it for me and he said, no, it's totally clean. Like the first two seconds are just like, mm-hmm. it's super fast decay. So these things, these gigantic monsters that, that really were a major pain in the ass to build are actually working. They're so heavy. It's MDF, lumber, and 705. And so wow. there's... A, a bottom of MDF and a top of MDF. So that's heavy because mm-hmm. they're, you know, six feet long by four feet by this weird little shape. Then there's a channel made out of heavy lumber. Mm. Then there's posts made out of heavy lumber. And then all that is filled. There's two layers of 705 in the front and then there's loose bat in the back and there's mm. plywood to heavy duty plywood in the back and on the side to close it. And the, the front is uh, left open so that the sound can go through. Yeah. Uh, it takes four people to lift to lift it. Four and it made days. it through the door? It was built in the room. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Yeah. So when the, when the landlord kicks me out of here, <laughs> he might not find his doors in the best shape. Right. <laughs> I didn't say it loud. Yeah, um, or so in no, any publicly recorded thing. It would, well, it's actually it's a two-piece thing. It would actually fit through the door, uh, but okay. not with the humans. It would have to be on a dolly. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then yeah, it'll yeah. just very carefully make it over to the elevator. Exactly. <laughs> on the way to Patagonia. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> um, uh, let's see. What else can I tell you about that? Uh, Speaker against a wall, against a wall. If you're in a small room, away from the corners, beware of the first reflection. Trap the base, trap the corners so that you have less bass in the room. I know it's counterintuitive, but if you trap the bass, you'll have less bass me- bass mess. You're gonna hear it more, and you're gonna place it better. Don't forget that the difference, the corner between the ceiling and the wall is a corner. The mm. corner between the wall and the floor is a corner. So anything you can trap, trap. No, you'd be yeah. good. Yeah. That's the way um, to go. Interesting uh, story. Our our friend Adam Hawkins just moved to Nashville. Yep. And 
he's trying to get his his room set up right now and he sent me a picture this morning he just he went and just got a ton of rock wall and just put it up in the corners because he's got to work right now so he's got like stacks of rock wall behind him and just up in the corners no fabric and he's like all right i'm working so yep. yeah yeah that's all you need to know it's deceptively simple it's just yeah. volume and mass that's all it is mm -hmm. laws of physics volume and mass so I think if you want to really try and be intuitive about it, I mean, I, before I set this out to be able to be relevant in conversation with my acoustician, uh, because, you know, when you, you hire a professional, you have two options. Either you say, you just give him the baby, um, uh, or you try to get involved and learn something and also help shape because, you know, very often you hire a professional and they do something for you and you're like, mm, not sure about this, you know, uh, because this is a question of point of view. So to be relevant to this process, I read the Acoustic Engineer Handbook version 5 and I did all the exercises and did all the math. Mm. So when he said, well, your RT is this, RTA, FUM, PLAF, and the, the cos cosinus of this divided by that. And then I said, yeah, sure, yeah, 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 okay, I got you. I mm -hmm. couldn't do it, but I understand it. And I understand the rules. I understand why a diaphragmatic resonator works. I understand what the energy transfers are because I read the book before I hired him. Mm -hmm. I didn't read the book to do it myself. I read the book to be able to have a conversation with somebody who knows better than me. Yeah. Um, so if you think about when you walk around in your life, think about what sound, how sound carries through. If you're in a club and you're in the, in, you're in the uh, bathroom, that has a sound what frequencies are absorbed what frequencies are not absorbed what kind of wall is it you know you can think about that stuff if you go to mm. a good concert hall like a, an opera hall you know you understand how reflection works like somebody a fly farts on the stage you can hear it from the top of the thing there's a reason for that it's by mm. design you know so it's it, it's something you should know I didn't have, that's something I should know. So I read the books. Really fucking boring book. Really boring. I had to really force myself, but I did it. And I did all the exercises and all, and all the math stuff and all those. So, so that I know, so that I, not that I didn't trust him. Obviously, I trust him. Otherwise, I would hire him. But just so that when he talks to me, I can say, yeah, okay, I get that. You know, as mm -hmm. opposed to, yeah, man, you know better. That's bullshit. Right. Yeah. 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 So it, it was it was good. It was a good experience. I've learned a lot. Like the first reading we did over there, before we turned the room around, uh, there was a five hundred hertz dip, like this, like a like a crater. And I was like, what's going on? And he says, and he said, It's your desk. It was the old desk. And I was like, What? No. 10 dBs at 500? What are you talking about? And um, and so I went and got every blanket and mattress I could find, whatever, and put it there. Sure enough, it was there. And he didn't have, he just knew. You know, isn't that awesome? Yeah. Um, so now I've learned. Uh, and, and so now that I've read a lot of stuff like, you know, how sound travels and uh, through materials and stuff, you know, when he said, you should really put the speaker six feet, instead of saying, oh, dude, no, I want to be close, I, I had enough information to at least make myself want to try. Right. Yeah. Um, six feet away is not for every speaker, not for you. Don't try this unless you have the right situation. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, everything was taken care of, you know, to make that work. It's, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it's also interesting. I mean, every element of that space like feeds off of the other right like your positioning of the desk how big the desk is and the speakers being where they are oh we just lost your audio actually i'm not sure how how about um, coming back slowly well we don't need this anymore there we go. So let's now just it's working back it's good how about Oh yeah. Yep. All good. Okay. Um, um, what was I saying? Um, Talking about like every component were, of the room feeding yeah. each other. Yeah. Many, 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 many years lying down 
on my bed trying to figure out imagine what it was going to be like yeah the layout even the cabling and we made so many mistakes um you know and we also wanted to not i didn't want to spend another ten thousand dollars on a cable harness so we had to reuse a lot of the existing cable harness we did we bought two cables for the entire redoing of the room even though we flipped it around and the racks went to the other side that it used to be and that was fun ask tom about that i was super and redoing the patch bay by the way the patch bay is still handwritten because we're not 100 percent. it's not frozen yet so it's yeah it's, uh, the patch bay labels are on sharpie everything's written right. in sharpie yeah and that's going to change soon uh, because i'm pretty happy with this but for example i discovered that um uh i have two two buses i have one that's behind the um the hd x-ray one that's behind the apollo ring right mm -hmm. and and i have 32 channels of apollos and i had put the, the two bus behind the second uh the, the bottom apollo and i just realized that that's done because if i put it the top apollo then a session will travel between um rooms much better i basically will just open it and then pro tools to yeah. to basically the, so now i have to go we have to go in the back and change the 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 normals so that right. you know shit like that there's no way in hell you can create you, you can't unless yeah. you've been in that exact situation before Unless you make a cookie cutter studio, that's exactly like any, uh, every other studio in the world, which it clearly is not the situation here. Yeah. Like, what is it like to have a dock, two S's, and four iPads on a desk? There's one Ethernet switch just for the iPads in the dock. Think about it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven plus this guy, eight. So I have eight because I have my phone during the day. Yeah. Um, so there's a 10, 10 port switch and there's only one port left open. <laughs> yeah. It's preposterous. Yeah. And, 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 and because the, the ninth port is going to the, the main network. Right. Uh, and all the Thunderbolt rig here is obscene. Like the way the Thunderbolt is routed you can come in and plug your laptop, any laptop of any type, into this this Thunderbolt port. This this one that's right here. If I touch it, it's going to ruin the mm -hmm. sound system. Um, but you want to be able to be compatible with Thunderbolt two. My machine is Thunderbolt three. Mm -hmm. uh, the X four is Thunderbolt three. Most laptops are, that are, you know other people have is Thunderbolt are Thunderbolt two. The Apollo is mm -hmm. Thunderbolt three. Right. And right. the the hubs that actually are functional are Thunderbolt two, so you go figure that one out. Um, right. And yeah. then the monitoring. Think about this: I have keys that are digital. Mm -hmm. I have the output of Pro Tools, which is digital, but um, sometimes I have an analog outputs. Also, sometimes people come down here like and like to use analog speakers, so I can't use the controller of the key. For everything so i have my and also i have my oritone that i like to use and also there's the ipod hookup you know mm -hmm. and then there's my vinyl there's my turntable yeah. right, so i have a hybrid digital monitoring system digital and system control system that when you look at it people were like literally walked away from it like i don't want to know you yeah. know <laughs> just to, to make to, to make it good because there's no piece of gear that does it yeah right so all that stuff took a long time right lots and lots of reflections lots and lots and a couple couple layers of trial and error. um but uh with a heavy on the error uh but uh but we did good it's it's a an unbelievable yeah to make. it was that's great amazing. before but now it's like the best i've ever had i'm so happy right that's awesome congrats on that um our audio is getting a little bit funky, so I'm going to close out of your phone and I'm just going to open up the mic on your computer. There. Cool. Uh, can I also get, can we get rid of the phone altogether? Yeah, yeah, it's gone. Can I also get, can we get rid of the phone altogether?
There we go. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? There we go. Yeah. Oh, much okay, better. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah, this great. Is way yeah, they, they have to come up with a remote camera. Let me shoot. Let me. There you go. <laughs> awesome. That happened. All right. So uh, let's do uh, one more question before we get out of here. And it's kind of along the same lines. Um, this one's from Adrian in Cleveland. Yeah. Oh, Adrian. <laughs> Hi, Adrian. And Adrian asks, how should all my drives be set up? Like, should the DAWs, Luna, and Pro Tools be on one and storage and backup elsewhere? I get going on songs, and pretty soon I seem to lose control of the file structure. I guess the question should be, how does a disorganized person become organized? Uh, anyway, I have a iMac, hard drive, a Glyph, a passport time machine, two storage drives, but not as much common sense. <laughs> Did you say... Wait, you did say ask anything, right? So if there's time, obviously. Cool. All right. So, um, um, OK. <clears throat> you don't leave your money hanging out. Mm. Just like, you know, if you, if you take cash out, you know where you put mm. it, you know? And even if you're not super anal about it, it, it could be in your jeans pocket or in your coat pocket, but it's, you're not going to put your cash just about anywhere, right? Your music is worth more than the cash yeah. because you own the music. Right. The government owns the cash. Uh, so just decide that to make a rule. Like all my music is in this one folder. The way I did, I do that. I'm a, a little bit OCD and and only tentative when it comes to that, because when I was young, so much younger than today, um, all my troubles seem so far away. Uh, I uh, lost a record. I lost a record to hard drive failure yesterday. I hadn't backed it up. <laughs> right. Um, a long time ago, and so after that, I became um, obsessed. It was my record that I lost, mm. a year of work. So, uh, and I lost it in the process of backing it up. Wow. It died, and it took the backup oh, with yeah. it. So, I lost everything. Um, so after that, I became super organized really fast. And then um, I haven't lost one file since, not one. Um, and are these files have been entrusted to my safekeeping. Uh, so the way I do, the way I used to do it is I used to have an audio drive and then an audio drive and then a backup of that audio drive. And I would work off the audio drive and then I would back up every night uh, and never touch the backup. And then when the drive was filled, I would move on to the next drive and then I would buy two drives at a time. And always have a backup of the first one. And every night, ChronoSync would do, do an automatic backup. That was then. Um, there are issues with that system. Uh, the issue with that system is that, say, you in the middle of a record, and it's on drive A, and it's full. But you start another record, and you go to drive B, and now you have to work off drive A and drive B, and backup A and backup B. So there's yeah. temptation to copy the project you're still working on from drive A to drive B and have that project be on drive B, but then now you have two copies. And I always had as a rule that I don't erase anything. Mm. I just don't, you know? So, so that didn't work. So I moved on to another system where now I work off Dropbox. So you, Adrian, you have Dropbox. You have to have Dropbox. And if you don't have Dropbox, buy Dropbox. Um, so because Dropbox works. It just does. And so you don't have to buy the enterprise level. I, I buy three Dropbox users to be able to have unlimited. Mm -hmm. So it costs me $60 a month. For $60 a month, I have unlimited storage on Dropbox. Right now, right now my Dropbox, my pro Dropbox holds, where's the icon? Uh, amount of storage. Where's the amount of storage on this thing? Uh, for you, recent. Hold on, I gotta find it. It's obscene. Uh, somehow he thinks I'm on basic. I tell you, I'm not on basic. Uh, Eleven point two terabytes. Yeah, on, yeah. on Dropbox. <laughs> so um, um, regularly, they just and for, to to be able to do that, you have to have three users, enterprise level. 
But mm -hmm. if you don't make as much music as I do, you don't have to do that. You can function with you know a regular Dropbox, um, and um, and then buy more storage as you go. Um, so um, and what that does for you is a it does all your backups. So you only need one copy because mm -hmm. they back it up all over the world. Also, if you happen to erase a file, you can get it back three months down the line. That's great. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So at the beginning of, of Luna, uh, when I was alpha testing Luna and the file system was not necessarily as you know ready to go, I was able to go back and get um, and get some files that you know Luna erased at the very very beginning, the first you know unstable alphas. Actually, it wasn't Luna. It was me. I just didn't know. I couldn't answer. I could not put this um, character into the name, or something like that. And I was able to get back and get those files back. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> that also allows me to share with collaborators in real time. So, for example, if I'm working with Edu Cabra, we work off the same files at the same time. He's in Puerto Rico. I'm here. You know. So that's the way the way I do it. As far as having Luna and your, your, your app or your sample libraries and your audio separated, this is left over from when drives were slow. If you're working on your laptop, on your internal drive, it is so blazing fast. You will not see um, a, a, a difference in impact in performance at all. Uh, it's probably actually faster than to, to, have, to work off internal drives and external drives because if you use a Mac, the internal drive on a laptop on a Mac is 3,000 megabytes per second. On this tower here, I have uh, P PCIe 2 blades, and I get, I don't know, uh, let's, let's see if I have a speed test. I think it's Asia makes that thing right. Asia test. I think I'm telling you the numbers. It's obscene how fast it is. Uh, so my Dropbox, so the way I am set up right now is I actually have my Dropbox set on a separate hard drive. And it's reading, it writes at 500 megs per second, and it reads at 500, it reads and writes at 500 megs per second. Good enough for me. Right, right. Yeah, you know, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, and if I want to choose, let me close this and do it again, Asia. Uh, the internal drive that, um, that comes with the machine, uh, Flux Pro, there you go, poof open that one goes at ah i need to change permissions because catalina is very nosy but it's like in the in the thousands of megabytes per second so actually you'd better off storing your audio on your internal drive the problem with that is that you're going to run out of space right and okay. my solution around that on my laptop is i use dropbox and i use the cloud system mm -hmm. so when i'm done with the project i make it cloud only so mm -hmm. i have a four terabyte hard drive but it holds 11 it holds 11 terabytes worth of shit plus the system plus the libraries plus whatever you know pictures so um so and that that is possible because dropbox lets you dissociate basically make an alias of the files they keep it for you and if you don't need it right now it's not it, you can look at it but it doesn't take any space it's just like the shadow of itself and then you say local and then it downloads it so for example you know i got a really sweet text from crosby david crosby last night uh and and he said hey uh can i have that file and and can you do this and stuff and i'm like yeah i can do that i make it i, have, I finished that record a year and a half ago mm -hmm. i don't i don't have a hard drive with it on it it's in dropbox i right click make local downloaded it 10 minutes before, 10 minutes later, I opened the session, did the thing, sent him the file, and make it cloud only, and poof, went back into the cloud. It's nice. Yeah. yeah. So that's a good system. If if you want to be, if you travel or if you collaborate with other people and you don't want to drop use Dropbox with those people, then use a, um, a syncer like either Carbon Copy Cloner, CCC, or Chronosync, and, um, and just clone your project to an external hard drive. SSD if possible, and then um, and then take that to where you work. But you have to come back and you have to clone it again because you could lose that drive. Yeah, yeah. Which is why no matter where I work, if I'm going to work remote, I'm going to work off my machine 
90% of the time. And that machine, even if it's my laptop, shoots to Dropbox in real time. So even if, you know, it's my machine melts, which it did, it's Apple right now, it's, it's broken. It melted from all those live streams. And they were kind of stunned. They were like, how did you do this? I said, well, as you can see, it's pristine. It's internal. I didn't go inside. Mm -hmm. you know? um, so they're trying to fix it. Um, but basically, everything is off Dropbox. When it stopped working, I lost no work because it's all in the cloud and already synchronized to this machine. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to work. So uh, because I have the good fortune of getting to watch Peter Mix videos early, because I, I watched them uh, before we put them out, um, I got to see the new version of your backup strategies video with Andrew Sheps. That's uh, right. And you guys discussed this on there. So actually, I still have the box sitting here because I just installed this. I just got this um, GTEC uh, RAID system. It's Thunderbolt uh -huh. 3. And uh -huh. so I have it running in RAID 1. So it's constantly making a copy to another drive. And I yeah. only have my Dropbox folder on there. So it's yeah. up in the cloud. And then there's two local copies here. And yeah. I should say that I have another thing which I completely forgot about because I haven't used it in a long time. I have a local backup of everything. There's actually, I don't take care of Dropbox does. Mm. I have a Synology 24 terabyte monster and it's sitting in the shop. It's connected to the internet and to the intranet. And whenever I do something on this machine, it shoots to Dropbox. And then within the minute, Dropbox sends a copy of it to that drive that's physically here. So when Cross called for his thing, I didn't actually didn't have to download um, from Dropbox, I could have gone on my local network and found it on that machine. I just didn't. Mm. Wait, so, I mean, the Dropbox thing is fast too, so it works out. It's, it's fast enough. I mean, if it's a whole album, you're better off going local. And the thing mm. that's amazing is the Synology thing. If I can work off it from Pro Tools, I can mount that drive here, work off. That's why I did it the gigabit. Yeah. And then when I save, the Synology server will shoot that shit back to Dropbox, which would then synchronize back to the local version here. It's crazy. Yeah. There's no reason to lose your files, Adrian. None. And uh -huh. it, there's, there's no reason. The only reason why people wanted to separate apps from audio is that back in the day when the OS would first, when Pro Tools would read the files from the hard drive all the time and then also try and write stuff to. Um, to the app preferences and stuff like that, they would be the, the needles on the hard drives, physical hard drives jumping all over the place. But now, first Pro Tools loads everything into RAM. So you'll see your disk activity in Pro Tools, unless your session is seven, you're an Alan Meyerson and you have a thousand tracks mixing the new Star Trek movie, uh, your, your needle, your drive needle is not moving because everything's in RAM. That's why you need a computer mm -hmm. with a lot of RAM. Pro Tools caches everything in RAM. And then they basically write nothing. And SSDs are so fast um, that the caches are really not a problem anymore. So that the, the idea, I haven't separated my audio from my apps in about since 2000, since 2012. I got that my when I got my laptop. And then, uh, the only reason why I separated Dropbox here is to be able to have one gigantic Dropbox folder uh, so that everything can stay local here until for another two, three years. And then I'll start, you know, clouding things. Mm -hmm. So crazy. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. And that, that video will be out next Wednesday. So you guys can Ooh, that's all exciting. check it out. Yeah. And Andrew, Andrew has a different strategy than Fab. And, yeah. Really different. Yeah. So, but mine's better. <laughs> Yours doesn't require one uh, in, in a friend's basement, if I remember right. So. The thing for me is that it doesn't require me to do anything. Mm. So when when I am been mixing, like yesterday, I sat in this chair at 9 a.m. And I went back downstairs at 1 a.m. Do you think that at 1250, after being here since 9 a.m. nonstop, I was like, okay, I'm done. Let's back up. Hell no. <laughs> Never. It's more like, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> you know? 
So the fact that the machine backs okay. itself up, that's what I'm talking about. And also, awesome. this morning, I wake up, I have this piece of shit, I plug these in it, and I can hear what I did last night without having to do anything. Right. Yeah. It's nice. It's there. And that's when you realize that you should have stopped at 8 p.m., not at midnight. Right. Or 1 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. But that's okay. Amazing. All right. Well, on that note, uh, we should let you get back to it so you're not there till 1 a.m. again. So. Well, it's not <laughs> like a 1 a.m. deal again today. Right. Right. Um, so what Thank I hope you for all your time. Helpful. It's my pleasure. I hope this was helpful. Congratulations to the winners. Um, and um, we can, you know, now that the room is back up and running, we're going to be able to do these kinds of things a little more often. Yeah. Yeah. New shoots coming up and everything. So yeah, stay we tuned, guys. Awesome. Crazy shoots coming up. Really cool stuff, guys. Yeah, it's really fun. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. We will see everybody in the next contest. And yeah. uh, check out that backup strategy video next Wednesday. Ciao. <laughs> see you guys.